Ladies and gentlemen and others, welcome to the Spodcast. I'm Joe, and with me are my co-hosts, the ever-delightful Charles, and Hello. the newest member of our team, uh, the wonderful Kitty. So, uh, welcome to the show, Kitty. Hello. Okay. Um, the topics we're going to be discussing today include uh, the update to uh, that Legend of Korra are going to be, is going to be having a lot more in a way of that. Going to be having 26 more episodes, so that's going to be interesting to talk about, as well as sort of general thoughts on it. On it, um, and also we're going to be talking about the uh, Marvel pre- Marvel Television panel, which was at Comic Con this weekend. Uh, this weekend, uh, but first things first, um, Kitty, we need to give you the uh, introduction. So uh, I sent you a list of um, topics of sort of. Uh, questions. Uh, could you uh, basically give us what your favourite series and so on and so forth are? Absolutely. At first, my choice of my favourite animation from the past five years was a difficult one because I had completely forgotten that My Little Pony and Adventure Time were from the past five years. And it was, again, a very difficult de- decision. But I eventually went with My Little Pony because I am a brony and I have to be true to my heart. Mm. Uh, my favourite cartoon series of the decade was Witch, which is um, a Disney animation based on an Italian comic. And it's a nice, intelligent approach to the kind of magical girl thing or elemental warrior rather than the usual, oh, we've got powers, we can suddenly use them perfectly sort of thing. Mm. Uh, My favourite cartoon series, older than a decade, is Brambly Hedge, which is an adorable stop motion about some mice going about their daily business. It it wasn't particularly interesting, but it's just so sweet. And even today, um, if you look on YouTube, it's up there in really high quality, and it's really very... You know, sweet. If you need something to do and you don't have anything else but look at kittens, go look at some Brambly Hedge. Okay. Um, My favourite animated movie is Anastasia. I try to stay away from Disney films and the like, but I really couldn't think of any that weren't. So I just went with Anastasia, which is Mm. less Disney than the rest. Um, Not actually being animated by Disney. That was actually animated by Don Bluth, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, um, find you. <laughs> the thing I love about that song is it does sound like classic meatloaf, sort of classic sort of old rock sort of stuff. But when you actually see the video of it, it I think the nostalgia critic said it was sort of like pink pink insects and so on and so forth, and you're expecting skeletons with guitars and so on and so forth. Well, considering the guy's undead, you think he will have a bunch of skeleton minions or something? It was like, you mm. don't just handle the little green flying ghost patch. You really had to settle for the pink bugs. <laughs> yeah, the pink bugs were a little bit out of place. But yeah. then Rasputin wasn't particularly a villain anyway, since we didn't mm. really understand his motives. Mm. No, um, his uh, kind of side plots were shoved in at the last second just to give an antagonist. <laughs> Mm. But, you know, a girl trying to find her lost family, that, that doesn't make a good movie at all. Crazy Undead Russian Monk. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, Favourite episode? Um, I couldn't find one because I just had such a big trouble choosing. Mm. Okay, so... But then uh, my favourite short was the Peter Finder General from the Monkey Dust Collection. Um, it's just absolutely hilarious, and I find it very ironic to have a man dressed as a witch judging people. <laughs> One of the things I love about that series is the fact that the guy is so clearly evil. He's like green smoke appearing everywhere and so on and so forth. And everybody's like, yeah, the guy he's accusing, who's probably done nothing wrong, we're just going to let him kill him and applaud him when he does it. So, yeah. And just murder an innocent and have a very, very creepy voice. Mm. I am the pedo finder general. <laughs> I pronounce you guilty of pedophilia. <laughs> anyway, um, the Mewling Kitten Award for say, show that needs more love. 
I've gone with The Secret Show, which is a very kiddie program, obviously aimed at about 10-year-olds, I'd say. Um, but I st- it's, I'm not sure entirely when it was first broadcast, but it's quite funny, and my friends and I had a good time watching it, even though we were about 15 at the time. <laughs> okay, and uh, the Cosmic Retcon Award for series that needs to be scoured from existence. I've gone with Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry. It's just animals abusing each other, and it's not particularly nice, and I don't really think that kids should be watching stuff like that. So, the fact that it was sort of... This is a huge amount of influence when it came to the... Um, how it was sort of... Uh, how the how animation history has all been sort of built up around it and so on and so forth and all the really really sort of impressive amounts of um, animation works and the fact it was one of the first of TV animation shorts um, so that was sort of like yeah it's animals abusing each other I'm sorry if I'm judging Kitty but I I just don't think that we should be making our kids watch something like that I mean. Admittedly, quite a few kids probably enjoy it. I wasn't one of them, so that's coloured my decision. Okay, that's fine. Just... Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's animals beating the crap of each other. I'm getting what I'm paying for. If it had been, if it had been retcon, something else would have taken its place, hopefully of a nicer and gentler nature. Mm. Fair enough. Um, the... So we've got uh, the uh, series you'd most like to be made, um, adaptations, and uh, then it's going to be original series. Um, the series I'd most like to be made would be a mature approach to Pokemon, but not a separate series, huh? an actual, you know, an actual Pokemon series, but one with a more deep protagonist possibly one that's not 10 years old and doesn't ever age although that doesn't bother me particularly um just a more adult approach to the pokemon world for example um pokemon perhaps getting properly injured rather than being healed right away in a uh, pokemon station uh pokemon center that's what they're called yeah. how could i forget that um possibly um Pokemon, well, I wouldn't suggest that we go into breeding Pokemon, as is still Pokemon and I want some innocence to be retained. But there's there's but, the internet for that. Yes. <laughs> Let's not try Googling Rule 34. No. I'd just like to see an adaptation of Pokemon that's not made purely to get money from young kids. Okay. And uh, for... Uh, that was was that for the adaptation or was that... no that was for the series that I'd most like to be made the, the original series um, okay and uh, uh, adaptations um, there's a lot of things that I'd like to see adapted into any kind of media um, a lot of really good books out there that I think could do with TV adaptation but I've gone with Biesengast which is a English language manga. Um, there was a competition by Tokyo Pop that was won by a German writer who wrote in English. It's a story about a uh, clinically depressed girl who suffers hallucinations, and we're not sure whether the story is part of her hallucinations or reality. And since it's a animated format anyway, in the form of manga, I think that it would do really well as a cartoon adaptation. Okay. Okay, so we've got um, we've got uh, MLP, Witch, Bramley Hedge, Anastasia. You couldn't find a uh, favorite a favorite episode. The favorite shorts being the Peter Find Find General. Stuff. Um, the Mewling Kitten Award would be the Secret Show, Cosmic Retcon, Looney Tunes, and uh, 